One of the things that Clara Barton and her volunteers did during the Civil War, they sat by the bedside of a wounded soldier and they wrote letters back home so that their families knew where they were, what they were up to, what was going on, the extent of the injury. So we continue that legacy today. Just today we do it in electronic fashion. Service to the Armed Forces is the impetus for the creation of the American Red Cross. The Red Cross personnel who are stationed in the Middle East, we have, we have a team in, in Afghanistan, two teams in Iraq and a team in Kuwait. We rotate them out every four months and they serve alongside the military and they're, they're right there providing the same Red Cross services that we provide here back home but they do it shoulder to shoulder with the military who are deployed there. They're in the middle of a war zone. Uh, is there danger there? Yes, there's danger there, but they don't think about it. What the Red Cross is doing is bringing a piece of home uh, to those service members who are stationed there and doing a really important job. Hi, I'm Bob Marble. My home is normally Palmetto, Florida, but my current home is Baghdad, Iraq, lovely Camp Liberty. Behind us, you see the walls of our castle that we call the Red Cross Station here in Baghdad. If you want to come with me, we will uh, take you inside the walls and give you a nice tour of the building. Bob Marble's been, uh, been around for a little while. He is a Vietnam vet. Uh, he is very passionate about the work he does for SAF and serving the military. So this is our lovely station. It's uh, left over from the Saddam Hussein era. Uh, we're not sure what the building was, but this whole area was a game preserve and riding club. And uh, here you see a deck that was built by a local engineer company probably at least four or five deployments ago. Coming out a little farther, you can see that we have a cover that was donated by one of the units and it provides shade when it gets up to 130 or so in the summer. It's an area that, that military members can go on their off time to get away from everything and just relax. Some of them just want to sit down and relax and read a book. and Some of them just want to watch a movie. Others just want to sit on the computer and, and uh, email and talk to their friends and family. And so we try to provide a little bit of everything there for those service members. Uh, you're presently in, I guess, what we would call the living room, uh, where we have our library and popcorn machine and cold water and books and videos over in, in this side. Everything here has been donated either by our good friends and neighbors in the states or by units that are already over here. In one of the offices, they bake bread. And we have uh, uh, folks back in the states who send uh, uh, homemade jams and jellies there. And so as they bake bread, service members are there eating the homemade bread and, and smearing the, the, the homemade jams and jellies. It's fantastic. I wanted to show you another little spot we've got. It's called the Legacy Room, and in here, service members can um, Skype home. They can call. We have a DSN line that they're able to use, so they can make phone calls home, relax, get a little bit of privacy. There is a story of an Air Force uh, meteorologist based in Baghdad, Iraq, about a year ago, and he was able to view the birth of his daughter back in Nebraska through Skype. It was, fan it was a neat story. They provide us excellent support. They're just very friendly and uh, they help uh, get messages out to us in a very timely manner. Here in Iraq, just this last year, we've had over 1,800 uh, service members notified through the Red Cross system of uh, either great events, good news bursts and whatnot, and some of those tragic events like we all know. In the event there is a military member who is away from home, whether it's deployed or somewhere else stationed in the world, and there's a crisis back home, uh, the military family has the capability of reaching out to the Red Cross, and the Red Cross will help by notifying the command where that soldier, sailor, airman, marine, or service member is, is stationed, and let them know that there's a crisis going on, and we help with the arrangements and getting him back home on, on emergency leave. We couldn't do what we do without great uh, volunteers and the partners that we have like the Red Cross. There are about 25,000 men and women, soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, contractors, and civilians assigned to this base, about 12,000 of which are military. Uh, and the Red Cross, three personnel, three strong, provide great support to all those DOD military people that are here. Most of them do it knowing that they're not going to get rich. They're not, they're not one of the contractors who have gone there to uh, make their fortune. 
They're there because they are believers, passionate believers about the mission of the American Red Cross. It takes a unique person to be willing to do that and we are extremely fortunate that we have housewives, we have college students, we have military spouses, we have veterans, we have, we have a, a, a wide variety of people who, who are committed to the mission of service to the armed forces and are willing to take a chance and go there and do this. And uh, uh, they're my heroes, they are. They do great work there. This Memorial Day, we are, and every Memorial Day, we take time out not only to remember the veterans and those who served uh, in the military, but those who served with the American Red Cross to serve the military.